Yo, what's good, boys and girls? Welcome to my beginner's guide for Ember Knights. This game fucking rocks ass. It slaps tits. You're gonna love this game if you just picked it up. If you don't know about it at all, I assume you probably picked it up. Uh, it's fucking hype. It's very cool. It's very swag as well. We're gonna get right into it. Um, basically, what you can expect from this video is we're gonna be looking at the stuff you should be trying to achieve. Uh, basically, what you're gonna want to unlock in order to get better at this game, and we'll do like a little bit of weapon and, and uh, like uh, builds type shit. Okay, so let's go over to the game here. All right, you can see I'm looking pretty swag. I'm looking pretty neat. You're also gonna see that a lot of the stuff for me isn't unlocked, and that's because I played on a uh, with a friend the whole time, and we were on his save, so oddly enough in this game, uh, if you're looking to play this game single player and maybe you are playing with your friends and they're not looking to play this game single player, you know, you should you should be the host of the world because when they load up their save, I loaded up this one for the first time and I had to actually go in and do like a run before I even had the skill this ember tree unlocked. All right. And I'll explain that in a second. But yeah, I basically have nothing unlocked on this one, but I know all about it. I have everything unlocked through the course of the game. So yeah. Uh, the Ember Tree. Let's let's start with this guy, okay? In order to unlock this, you're gonna have to do one run first. You could go right in and die right away. It would be a waste of your time because you have to collect this currency called Ember, okay? So, so now you see it at the top left, all good right there. And so Ember is your main currency for everything in this game. You're gonna use this to upgrade your Ember Tree. This is the Ember Tree. It's sick. It's cool as fuck. It's a, it's a great uh, roguelike system that's good in all these roguelikes where you have some sort of uh, permanent upgrade system. That's what, that's what makes these games fun, right, boys? Okay, and so you see how there's like eight different skills, right? So you have a selection, not for all of them. You see how there's like little circles above them? Three little circles up here, two here, and one here. That means uh, how many selections you have of each category. So for this one, I could use any of these three skills. But if I equip this one, I don't get the benefits of this one and this one, okay? So this one that I have maxed, you heal for five HP after completing a room with enemies, okay? So every time I kill all the enemies in a room, I get five HP refunded to me. This one is gained five max HP. So if I had this equipped, it'd be higher at max because it's five HP, right? So let's do some little mass. Like, let's go back to kindergarten and do some mass. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You'll get 30 additional max HP, which is pretty hefty, honestly. Uh, you usually start this, depending on your weapon, with like 40 HP, and then uh, 40 or 50, and then the hammer 60, I believe. So 30 HP is nothing to fucking scoff at, boys. Uh, so that's pretty good, but healing 5 HP after each room if you're getting hit it like, you know At least like averaging once every room or two then yeah, this is great, too I've, I've loved this one, but eventually I feel like I'll, I'll switch to thick skin uh, Earn vitality uh, gain six max HP after defeating a mini boss and a boss. Okay guys I, I guess we're gonna go through and I'm gonna tell you which one I, I think it uh, might be right for you So I think regeneration is great for new players to the game if you're a new player You need to run this regeneration to unlock this you just have to put one point in this and this only costs one to level up to one because uh, everything else is more expensive. But this is only going to cost one because it's like your first unlock. So this will cost you one. So it's basically nothing. And then you could, yeah, you could upgrade this or you get this one. You're going to want to get this one, boys. You want to get, get this max fast. In order to unlock the rest of these, by the way, you only start with the one. You just have to put upgrades in the other one. So maybe you want to unlock this one really bad, this category. Uh, your best bet if you just don't really like you're gonna use these skills anyway You just upgrade the cheapest one right so that you can unlock the new ones faster Okay uh, But yeah, so earn vitality there's two there's a one mini boss and one boss on each world and there's there's basically four different worlds Maybe no, they wouldn't count the fifth one the fifth one has praxis and that's the final boss So you basically have four different worlds. Okay, so two times four that's eight Okay, so you're gonna get eight times six and then depending on how much the upgrades cost, I haven't gotten this one yet because I don't, I don't really see a need for the max HP. It, my guess is it will add one. Uh, fuck it, you know what, I have enough, I'll just buy it right now. Okay, it adds two max HP, okay? So six, eight, 10. 10 after each mini boss or boss. So if you do this and you get all four worlds done, that's 10, 20, 30, 40. So you, it's kind of goofy, guys, because you get 10 additional HP at the end, which is, is not bad, boys. Which is not fucking bad, boys, to be fair. But 10 additional HP at the end versus 30 throughout the whole run, and you have to complete three worlds to get the max thick skin, right? To get to get to where you are with this ability maxed, with this ability maxed, you have to complete three worlds. But then at the end, when you fight Praxis, which is the final boss, you'll have 10 additional HP. Is it worth it? In my opinion, no. I don't think Earn Vitality is worth it. So I would initially roll Regeneration, and then I would I would probably invest in Thick Skin. Uh, once you once you feel like you're not really taking damage anymore, 
Uh, something that I can't teach you is just being good at the game, right? You're, you're dodging, your reaction time, you're just gonna have to play and get good at the game. Uh, I, 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 I probably make a video on different enemy types, and uh, you guys should definitely subscribe. It's fucking subscribe, boys. Because if you're trying to get good at this game, you're gonna wanna hit that fucking button. And if you think I'm a cool guy too, hit that button too, because there's a lot of other stuff. I do a podcast and everything, but uh, yeah, so thick skin after you get some regeneration max, okay? And then we're gonna go to Giant Slayer, okay? This one, this category right here, this is kind of like your damage category. Do you wanna do damage to normal enemies or do you wanna do damage to mini bosses and bosses? Personally, I opted in for mini bosses and bosses because I feel like normal enemies aren't that big of a deal. Uh, but like the bosses near the end of the game, like those are those are really what wipe you. Especially if you're playing this game, uh, once you beat it the first time, there's like a new like modifier section, right? So you're gonna get all these different modifiers and, and there will be, throughout the entire game, there's mini bosses variants, right? So like you'll fight, for the first time you fight the first like mini boss, uh, it won't be the same boss you fight the second time you fight the first mini boss, you know, when you die and start a new run. Because mini boss variants are in every game. But boss variants are crazy and they're fucking hard, guys. And that's what you'll get once you beat the game once and then you put that variant in. Those guys are fucking tough. They're, not, they're nothing to scoff at. So it's definitely, I think Giant Slayer is better. But it, if you feel like the bosses you've got down and, um, you know, and you just feel like you really need to kill these mini bosses or not these mini bosses, these uh, non-elite or non-boss enemies, I, I would say. Uh, faster, sure, Slayer's fine. But I, I recommend Giant Slayer personally. Uh, let's see, easy money. This is like your uh, currency. This is how you're going to accrue currency, disregard women, and accrue currency, boys, okay? So pocket change, you gain extra starting gold. This is ass, guys. This is complete ass. You get 25 each, you start at 50. So let's let's do some more math, right? 50, 75, 100, 125, 150. You're going to start with 150 more gold. This max is 100, boys. Easy money. For real, for real. Easy fucking money, boys. That is the definition of this. This is honestly the best one. We, we could maybe talk about dividend. I don't know what it would be at max. Actually, let's fucking invest in dividend just to see. Uh, let's see. Two bonus gold. That's asinine, boys. Easy money is definitely going to be the best one. You get 150 starting gold, or you get 100 starting gold, and then 100 additional when you go to World 2, World 3, World 4, and World 5. Are they going to be worthless at World 5? Yes, but um, that, I digress. That means you're going to get 400 gold in total versus 150. This is dumb. You get 50 less. Who cares? Nobody gives a fuck. Guys, get easy money. Dividend, uh, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, 15, I probably could have done that math a little bit easier, but I failed math and I, no, I'm just kidding. Did I fail? I don't know, who cares? Uh, dividend is gonna be probably not good. 15, uh, let's say there's 10 rooms in a thing, in a, in a world, then you would get uh, 50 gold. Right? Or if I said 15, it'd be 150, and that's basically the same as easy money. You know, maybe dividend is better, Maybe it's not, until, but nope, until you make a shop purchase. I forgot about this little fucking caveat. Until you, This is ass, guys. You get 50 additional gold a world, but you can't spend the money. So like, I'm sorry guys, you max at 999 in this game, like halfway through. I'm gonna be honest, if you don't spend anything, this is a waste. Don't get dividend, guys. Don't get dividend, that's stupid. That's just, this is dumb, and this is dumb. Easy money's the only play. And if you, uh, I, I need to swap back. Sorry guys, I do not wanna be stuck with this garbage. And I gotta swap back here too. Uh, okay, so now that we know how to disregard women and acquire currency, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, these. These are like uh, your damage bonuses. If you're above, if you're below 25% HP, you get 20% damage. Fuck that. Fuck that, boys. We don't do... When are we gonna be 20, below 25? If you want a clutch perk for only 20... Let's see, how much is it? 4%, uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. 40% bonus damage below 25 HP. I guess that's kind of clutch. Fuck that, guys. We don't give a shit about that. Come on. Let's be real. 10% bonus damage when you're above 75. And then that's a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 20% bonus damage when you're above 75. Decent. Or you can get 10 bonus damage, 10% after defeating a boss. And have 10% at world two, 20 at world three, 30 at world four, and 40 at world five. Guys, fuck being at 20% HP. You can have 40% the whole goddamn fight at the end. What's the point? This is the only way, this is the only thing you should run, boys. This is the only thing you should run. You can maybe think about confidence, but you're kind of you're kind of goofy if you don't pick earn power, boys. Okay. Uh, let's talk. I, I know this is a beginner's guide, by the way, guys. But you're gonna be leveling these pretty decently, pretty fast. 
So I'm gonna talk about all of them because I don't want you to make a, a brutal mistake, okay? Uh, Soul Link, I know you see me on Second Wind. If you're playing solo, Soul Link is the way to go. Definitely go Soul Link because that only applies to you, but these are shared. If you're playing multiplayer, these are shared and it will only take the highest Soul Link uh, level of the of the player who has it the highest. So if I'm playing with my friend and he's got a level four and I've got it level four or three, it's gonna do four. It's not gonna do seven. It's gonna do four because he has level four. Okay, and we're gonna share that pool. So theoretically, the better player should should run Soul Link at level four, and the worst player should run Second Wind. Okay, if you're playing with three or four people, you're probably sh you probably should run Second Wind and then have two people run Soul Link. One person runs it. Your best player runs it at level one, and your worst player runs it at level four. Well, it's a tough call actually. You probably don't want your worst player taking up all the lives of Soul Link, but they should run it at level four so that you have more Ember to spend on other stuff. Your best player should have more Ember to spend on like other perks leveling them up, right? Uh, so yeah, don't do not do this. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you both level up to four, you're wasting your fucking Ember that could be best spent elsewhere when you're trying to get everything maxed to where you want it to be. Uh, so yeah, one person, like if you've got three, like I had three players, I ran second wind. And then I believe uh, we had someone run Soul Link at level four and at level one. I think I actually used it at level one for some time too. I, I'm usually the one who gets MVP, but that's, I digress. So yeah, guys, that, that's kind of a slippery slope. If you play solo, you should definitely use Soul Link, like I said, max it out. And if you play uh, multiplayer, someone should use second win. Somebody should use Soul Link. You know, it depends on how many players you got basically. Hope that was understandable. If you if, if not, leave a comment. I'll, I'll further explain, but I hope you were able to understand that. Your relic selectors can be refreshed five times. This is the only selection you get, and it's excellent. That's five times throughout the whole run. You can't select, you can't get a relic dice, basically, uh, for the new players, right? Uh, of course. The relic dice, you get relics in this game, okay? And those basically uh, amplify your abilities for the run. And if you die, you lose the relics and you do it again. It's how you make the build in the actual match, right? In the run. You make your build in the run by getting the relics. And so they give you a selection of three at default, uh, but you can get four with this. And uh, with this, you can actually re-roll that five times throughout the run. So you can't re-roll it five times on the same one. You could, but then you wouldn't be able to re-roll at all in the next one. So yeah, five. this is excellent, very good. Uh, skills, however, are like your abilities, right? So like you could throw a Chakram or you could set down a Ballista turret. Uh, you could do a, a dash, a, it's called charge, where you do a dash and it stuns enemies. There's a lot of different skills in this game. I haven't really invested in this one even though I have the money to, because uh, I don't use skills really at all. I am more of a melee kind of guy. I kind I kind of forget to use them, but my friend Mitchell, uh, uh, he uses this, he's got this maxed out, of course, if you like using skills, and you really should try to use skills because they're just additional damage or utility, I'm just forgetful. So yeah, this is a good one as well. This will let you reroll and, and get the abilities you actually want. Uh, and then finally this one, there's only really one right option here. Your first relic selector allows two relics to be chosen, that's dumb. Versus your relic selectors offer an additional option. This is pog, guys. This makes it so that you can actually get the relics you want throughout the entire game, instead of just uh, getting another relic throughout the entire game. But you probably, you'll have a lot less chance of getting what you want. You get, you still get the rerolls, but I think this is the only option. I think you might be able to argue for this if you, you know, if you don't really find yourself using all the rerolls. But you know, that's up to you. So that's the Ember Tree, guys. I hope that was very helpful. Uh, you're gonna go over here and see this. You'll unlock this uh, a little later in the game. It's kind of irrelevant. It's just, uh, it just basically shows you what the enemies are that you've discovered, how many times you've killed them. It's it's pretty irrelevant, guys, I'm gonna be honest. This this doesn't help you upgrade at all. It just is like a bestiary, if you will. I believe it's called the Compendium. Over here is where you can change your color. Uh, you got the four base ones. I like to use this yellow one, personally. Uh, but I, I'm going to use the Praxis one for this one. This is what you get when you defeat the final boss. It looks pretty metal. This right here, you all unlock this when you, uh, I think on your second or third run. I think it's your second run. This has a little cool little dinosaur guy, which of course I, I, I would always voice act with my boys. But uh, this is how you unlock new skills throughout the game. And what I mean by skills is like the abilities, right? You're like your Q and your E. Uh, so you, every time you defeat a new mini boss or boss, a new one specifically, and I'm not talking about variants or anything. Uh, you will get a tablet and you take it back to this guy and you get a new skill. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty swag as well. 
Uh, another thing we should talk about is sometimes relic orbs will drop when you're playing the game. Relic orbs will give you new relics. I still haven't gotten all the relic orbs. So I'm still unlocking new relics throughout the game. And it's kind of just random drop. I think it mainly drops on mini bosses and bosses. I think it might only drop on mini bosses and bosses, actually. So you should definitely uh, bring them to, to Esper here and he will identify them and you'll get your new relics uh, that will be available in the pool of relics for you to choose upon from now. Another thing with this dinosaur, uh, once you unlock them, you'll be able to do like time, like uh, you'll have time trial type deal where if you do the, the world fast enough, it's just a part of normal run. If you do the world fast enough, you'll get like a time capsule. So I think the first world was under eight minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, once you get your ember tree leveled up a little bit, it's actually really easy to to hit that um, that goal and you'll get a time capsule. And for every world, uh, when you get a time capsule, you will unlock a new ember, uh, a new uh, relic as well. And you'll even be given the relic in um, in that run. So if you get it for the first time, if you get world one's capsule for the first time, you'll get that new relic and you'll receive it in your run. Same thing for world two, three, four. And I don't think five has a time capsule. At least I might be mistaken. So you definitely want to try to get those. All right, guys, let's talk about weapons a little bit. I'm going to have a weapon guide coming out soon. That's going to be a lot more in depth, but I'll talk about them a little bit and I'll talk about the features a little bit. First off, there's going to be a guy here when you get uh, about halfway through world three, I believe. Um, is it world three or four? I, I, I think it's actually world four. When you get halfway through world four, uh, this guy will appear here. Unfortunately, like I said, since I was playing multiplayer, I can't see him in my game, but he'll appear here and he'll ask you to go get his arm. For him. So you have to go back to World 4, back to halfway through World 4 by the mini boss to get his arm. Defeat the mini boss and you'll get his arm. Then when you come back here again, he'll be able to upgrade weapons for you. Unfortunately, it won't let me show you the trees, but each weapon has uh, a skill tree kind of deal. It's got three different uh, layers, basically. So there's three available at the top, three available in the middle, and three available at the bottom. And the ones at the top, you can only select one, uh, one of those, kind of like uh, the ember tree so like you can only select one of these right and it's the same deal right you have to buy this one to be able to buy this one then you have to buy this one to be able to buy this one right so it's the same deal uh on that so for the horizontal lines uh for the skill trees for these weapons and uh yeah it's pretty cool it'll let you unlock different benefits and once you buy all of them you'll actually get a, a new cosmetic look for your weapon which is very cool as well uh i still i've only completed the scythe and I'm working on the sword as well. Uh, and they're they're both pretty fun. But you can see here basically all the different chains, what the charge attack does, and, and what uh, benefits you get from the weapon. They're all uh, they're all pretty cool. I'll, I'll, I'll describe them a little bit now. The sword is basically a pretty fast attacking uh, melee weapon. It's the weapon you start with in order to unlock the other weapons. You have to just uh, accrue a certain amount of ember. So you just play the game and you'll unlock the weapons naturally. The sword has like this dash attack, as you can see like here where I roll and I hit. This is actually, I feel like does more harm than good a lot of the time because I believe it cancels your dodge early. So you're not getting the iframes from your dodge. Uh, and I'm sitting here mashing click, right? And then I want to dodge, but I'm also mashing click at the same time because my, my P brain can't fucking like say, Luke, you need to stop mashing click while you dodge. Okay, so if you're kind of like that too, the sword's pretty tough to play, but I've had a lot of uh, success with the sword even with that. Uh, so yes, that's, that's the sword. Uh, and then you'll unlock the bow. This weapon is, is great. Uh, it keeps you out of harm's way. It makes it a lot easier to take care of a lot of different enemies that uh, you would otherwise get hit by. Most, the one I think about the most is in World 1, there's this spinny enemy that has like spikes on it and he'll spin around and taking him out with melee is hard. You have to like space, kind of space right, like, right next to him uh, where he won't touch you, but he'll touch the sword and you swing. This makes it a lot easier. However, you can't move while you're shooting. Uh, and you can also charge up and get perfect hits. Once you get three in a row, they'll shoot further and deal more damage. And you can just keep doing this. But uh, if you take too long in between shooting the perfect, you'll lose the streak. So bow's pretty good, but like I said, uh, locks you in place when you shoot. The staff my friend Mitchell used a lot. This is great for skills. As you can see, I actually already start with the skill. This is the only one that does that. And uh, for this is a pretty basic mechanic, but you just have to land hits to recharge your skills. Uh, they have more ability damage. If you look, each of the different weapons, I didn't mention this, have different stats attached to them. So they'll deal different base damages. Uh, the next level staff will actually do 20% additional skill damage. So your skills will do more damage. They'll have different crit. Uh, this one, I believe the Ninja Star looking one, Razor Wind, has 10, the highest crit at 10%. 
And uh, Guardian Bow also has the second highest at 5%. The rest have two. Speed, everybody's locked in at 100. Besides the Rift Hammer, you're only 90. And the Guardian Bow, you're actually 115. And HP changes too. The melee weapons will have 50 HP besides the hammer, which... Oh, wait. That's actually crazy. It's only the blade. I didn't even see that. I've been running... I guess I have been running Reaper Stolen, and having 40 HP a lot. Uh, but this is kind of a melee weapon. I would cons I would say this is more of a close range weapon. 40% HP or 40 HP, 40 HP, uh, 50 HP for the Ember Blade. So this one's a little tankier, but the, by far the Rift Hammer is the tankiest. And another thing that I'm going to mention in a minute is how you can actually increase these stats. Which ones are the best for which stat? So like I said, the staff is pretty cool. Uh, it's got a mid-range attack. You see here, I can hit it pretty decently away. And it's also got a charge attack here uh, that will hit the enemies during the charge and at the end. So it does a 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, whereas this was just kind of like 1, 2, 3. So you'll get 4 hits. It, it should be easier to charge your attack, especially if you're hitting enemies in an AoE. It'll be easier to charge your spell. So this is great if you like uh, the abilities in the game. Most people use the Nexal Staff with the Ballista because the Ballista just melts goofies, okay? And uh, that, that shit can be really powerful if you're upping your skill damage a lot. The Rift Hammer is, is uh, your tank weapon, right? Everything it is is an AoE, and you can increase the AoE by charging the weapon. As you can see, I'm charging, and the chain attacks turn into a charge. Very cool, but there's still AoE even without that. So this is a very cool weapon I want to use more. I've only really used it once, even though I'm a big melee player. Uh, but this is going to make you very tanky, and this is going to be the best tank weapon. And I'll explain it why in a little bit. Obviously, it has the most health, but there's something more to it. Uh, Razor Wind, this is your crit build. This is what you want to do if you're running crit. Uh... I had a friend play this one. You can perfect this as well. There's no streak for it though. And when you perfect it, you get you, this, you see this little uh, ring around me. I actually will do, I think, bonus damage. You see how it disappeared, but if I land the, the charge attack, I think it doesn't even have to be a, a, a perfect charge attack. Yeah, whenever you hit it with the charge attack, your chain attacks become empowered and deal bonus damage. So you hit a charge attack, then you get that little ring and you just use your chain attacks, your quick left clicks, right? These. And uh, yeah, you're gonna do more damage. So this is a great, this is a really fun, cool weapon. And uh, you get additional crit, so you're, you're, you're gonna build crit with this and probably fuck shit up, okay? And this was uh, my favorite most used weapon, but I'm probably gonna transition to either the hammer, maybe this uh, razor wind or the sword. I'm definitely more of a melee guy myself. Uh, but the Reaper Staff is pretty interesting. So whenever you land three hits from the chain attack, right? Your third hit. You get this little uh, little pip right here, okay? And then when you use your charge attack, you use the pips and you throw them. Now this guy's weakened, right? I don't think it's actually called, it's not called weaken, but uh, it's called slash. And that will increase your chance to crit. You can also change this with the power, with the uh, skill tree later to what it does. Your slash can freeze enemies, your slash can, uh, I think, pull them towards you, stuff like that. So now I'll have a higher chance to crit. You'll see more yellows on my screen now that he's slashed since he's got that above him. So pretty cool weapon. I personally uh, am just like a brain dead left click user. So I just like to spam left click, but this weapon is actually faster than the sword, I believe, at least from what I can tell. Uh, look, bum, 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 versus the sword, which is uh, bum, 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 bum. See, so yeah, that's faster and that's why I believe it does more damage. Uh, in the long run. However, if you do look at it, this does 13 damage and the sword does 15 damage. Same as the Rift Hammer, but the Rift Hammer, oh, and the Razor Run. Uh, the Rift Hammer definitely attacks the slowest out of them, and then the sword attacks, and then the, the Reaper's Toll attacks. Uh, I think the Razor Wind probably attacks pretty quick too. This is probably on par with the sword, I'd say, but not as fast as Reaper's Toll. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that. So this is a cool kind of advanced melee weapon. Uh, I think it's pretty helpful. It's decent. It's not great for a crit build, in my opinion, even though it does bonus crit, because you're only at 2% crit. But if you do hit like a boss or a mini boss, if you're trying to slay them, I think this is helpful, because landing this on them and increasing your crit, it does increase it by quite a, quite a bit. As you, as you can see, I can probably, I'm probably landing like 20% crit, I'd say. It probably ups it by like maybe 20%. So pretty solid. Uh, but yeah, that's all the weapons. And uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about these guys is uh, what they do with apples. They all have a, 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 not all of them, but they have most of them. I, I don't think the razor wind does, and I don't think that the bow does, but the rest do. I believe the blade slices. I don't think the blade actually slices the apple, but in this game, you can cook food. If you have a fire attack, 
uh, you can cook food. Either that's the skill that does fire, or you can get a relic that allows your weapons to do fire damage somehow. Maybe after you use a skill, maybe even after you roll or something, I don't know. But yeah, anything that's a fire attack. So if you cook an apple, it turns into an apple pie, and then you can slice it. I think with the ember blade, or uh, any of the slicing weapons, Razor Wind probably, Reaper's Soul, you can slice it up, and it'll turn into uh, pie slices. Normally an apple pie, I believe, heals nine or 10 health, and the slices will cumulatively heal four, uh, 12, four, I think four each for 12, or three each for 12, something like that. Uh, so you can share it with your team, or you just get more health in general. So that's a good one, but I don't think this slices up an apple. Uh, I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong. That needs uh, that needs testing. I'll, I'll put that at the end of the video, whether or not that this happens, or I'll put it right now. Hey, guys, post nut Luke here. And yeah, that blade does not slice up apples. You can use it for the pies, but it doesn't do shit to apples. So you're either going to want to use the hammer for apples uh, to get extra max HP, the scythe for extra damage, or the staff so that you can uh, refresh your abilities. Probably not the staff. Uh, but, but yeah, if you're going to use it anyway, why the fuck not, right? Uh, in a uh, comment or a post uh, thing. So Reaper's Toll does slice up apples, however, and that will give you one permanent damage increase. So instead of like the three or five health, whatever the useless apple gives you, you get a one damage increase permanently. This is why I think Reaper's Toll, even though it starts at only 13 damage versus the 15 of the other melee weapons, um, it can grow damage exponentially. However, if, the, if I test it and the sword does uh, also do this, the sword's gonna be better, even though this one does attack faster. Uh, Razor Wind doesn't have any sort of uh, thing either. It doesn't have a special thing, uh, but it, I think it can slice pies. Rift Hammer can smash apples, which will actually increase your HP. It's either by one or three, max HP. So this is why this is an even better tank weapon than you would assume. Uh, if you're trying to have a lot of health, that's the weapon to go. Next little staff, if you shock an apple, it'll turn into a, like, I don't even know what the fuck it is, a fruit cobbler maybe, I don't know, but it'll recharge all your skills. You can have up to two skills. It'll recharge them all by one charge. So, you know, this is pretty good for, for what the next little staff is. I don't think it's as good as the other ones though. But if you're playing solo and you have the staff, why not, right, if you don't need the health? But you might need the charge. And like I said, Guardian Bow doesn't do anything uh, with the apples as far as I'm aware. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's gonna be that's gonna be it for this, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything in the Nexus. I think that's everything that a, be a beginner would need to know, uh, uh, everything a beginner would need to strive for. I would say if you're looking for something more advanced, if you're looking for enemy guides, or maybe a more in-depth look at the weapons and their skill trees, uh, report back, hit that fucking like button for starters so that you let me know, hey, dude, this was a fucking pretty good guy. I'd like to see some more content on Ember Knights. I'm still curious about this or this. I'd love to see you guys leave some comments, say, hey, Luke, how do I how do I do this? Uh, what the fuck is this all about? Or maybe, hey, Luke, you're a pretty cool dude, or you suck ass. And I respond to all comments, guys, so I appreciate it. And fucking sub. So that if I do make more guides, which I, I'm pretty sure I've already made some thumbnails, guys. I'm at least going to make a, a few more. Uh, you know, you can actually stay up to date with them. So yeah, other than this stuff, your best bet is just to be get good at the game. And, uh, you know, you, you just have to build those reflexes. You have to build up uh, your reaction time to different enemies and learn their patterns. But this is like the, the bulk of the game that you kind of need to understand in order to get good is what should I buy, what weapons should I use, how do I unlock stuff, that sort of thing. So, hope you guys liked, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the fucking next one, boyos. Peace and hair grease.